Now here's another cube. And this looks a lot like a wall. And that is confirmed by the fact that it has a little attribute that says wall behavior when published from, from Revit or from Archiket. And based on that, we have another set of quantity algorithms that we run. So with length, reference side surface area, of course, very important for walls. And those are the things that we want to get from that cube. Volume, again, is extracted using that little module that we have in, in Takeoff Manager. So the, uh, the body of that element is, is analyzed by that, that module and creates a, a closed shell, a closed body. And if that is not possible, again, you get the, uh, the notification that says volume could not, could not be obtained because it is bad geometry. The reference line is a, uh, is a very important piece of data that we get from walls, regardless of its region, Archicad Revit. Um, it is the site of the wall that you use to define the start and end point. So the line from 1 to 2 is called reference line. It is so important because it helps us determine what the reference side of the wall is and what the opposite reference side of the wall is, and also to determine what the length is. There is several line segments in a wall that could be used to, to determine what the length is of that wall, but you typically want to use the, the line that you added to the, to the BIM to establish what the, what the length of that thing is. So for each collection of uh, surfaces that look like a, uh, like a wall, we get two additional pieces of information, which is XYZ for start point, XYZ for end point. Sometimes you use um, a, um, a column or a slab to model a wall. Right? And one of the strengths, of course, of VicoOffice is that you can convert it. You can convert a slab into a wall and then you get most of the quantities. Reference side surface area and opposite reference side surface area, you will never get. The reason is that these two pieces of information, point one and point two, are missing. We did not add that, add that when we um, published from, from the BIM application, so it's hard to guess where the reference line is. In that case, you will get, again, uh, missing quantities for reference side surface area and opposite side surface area. And you can, again, solve that by, uh, by painting this side and the other side. The way the algorithm works is uh, that um, it classifies all the, uh, all the sides just like with uh, slabs. And uh, the other surface area that we have is ends surface area for, uh, for walls. I'll talk a bit about that in the, in the next slide. First, I wanted to show another use case where you may be missing a, uh, a reference line. That is, um, most BIM tools allow you to, to cut a wall element from the bottom by using another element. Boolean operation is, is one example. Another example is uh, I'm using a, a roof slab to cut that element from the bottom. Very nice, but that may mean that my start and end point of the reference line now fall outside of the element that I see in Revit, or sorry, in Vico Office. So again, that results in not being able to get the reference line, therefore the quantities will have to be painted manually. Here we are with the uh, uh, reference side surface area. Um, just as with uh, slabs, we determine the angle with the project's normal vector, which is the vector that points into the z direction. And we say everything that is in this, this range, so from 90 to uh, 180, is considered vertical. Fair assumption, right? Or actually, 
it is like this. So anything between, what's this, uh, 19 minus, this is 45. Uh, to 25. So any, anything in that range is considered, uh, considered vertical. Now we have four of those for, for walls. For slabs it was easy. Everything that was vertical was considered edge. Uh, but we have three types for walls. Ref site, we have ends, and then on the other side we have opposite of reference site. Now the position of that vertical surface area is determined based on its position to the or its location compared to the reference line. So we know the uh, polygon's coordinates and we compare them to the coordinates of the reference line. The vertical surface area uh, that is parallel to the reference line we know is the side of the wall. It has to be. Now we have two options for the side of the wall. It is the side of the wall that is on the reference side or the side of the wall that's on the other side. And we determine that by calculating the distance to the reference line. So if your reference line is somewhere here, we have one distance over here, x1, and we have another distance over here, x2. In this case, x1 is smaller than x2, which means that we call this side the reference side. Now what happens if you don't have a reference line is that x1 and x2 do not exist and the um, there is also no vertical surface that is parallel with the reference line because the reference line does not exist again. So in that case there is kind of a safety net there is no quantity or no polygon, no surface sorry, that gets lost which is if a surface is not a reference side surface and it is not an opposite side surface it must mean that it's an ends surface. So what you typically see when you have wall geometry in Vico Office uh, that um, does not have a reference line is that the number for ends surface area is too high. That's because all vertical surfaces end up in that bucket. So again that can be the case with trimmed elements or converted elements.